Good evening. Happy Friday evening. Happy Sabbath to my brethren who are Sabbath keepers. Praise God. How are you? I am doing good. It's the end of the day. The weekend is here. And I thank God that I'm alive. It will be one week tomorrow that um, I will be 49 years old a week from tomorrow. So y'all pray for your girl. Okay. And, um, you know, pray uh, that God will continue to show me his light and his truth. And that he would bless me. All right, so send some birthday blessings my way. Okay, all right. Tonight, we're going to be talking about what we've been talking about. Romans 8, the new you, what God has done in you. He did something in you. This is not something where, oh, well, you know, he's just looking at me like I'm righteous, you know, but I'm really silly, still dirty. And, um, you know, he's just, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say. The truth of the gospel is just coming home to me so much that it's just, it's an amazing and amazing thing. You know, um, his word is coming alive, you know what I mean? And I am alive in him. I'm not dead in my sins anymore. I'm not walking around wanting to commit sin and wanting to do what he doesn't want me to do. You know what I mean? So I, I just thank God. I thank God for this revelation of his love and his truth. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Buena noches. Buena noches. I thank God that we are going to get into the word right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Romans 8. 5 through 8. We're going to read the scripture and then we're going to break it down. Okay. All right. So you have your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles. I hope you um, are ready for the word. Give you a minute to get your Bibles together. I hope everybody had a good day today. I hope that um, um, you're ready for a nice weekend and to enjoy yourself and enjoy the Lord. Enjoy your salvation. Don't don't walk around um all frustrated over the all the time, you know, oh I did this or, or I didn't do that and I'm not saying just do whatever you want to do. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is what whatever we have done, if you done something wrong, give it to God. If you didn't if you think that you're not doing right, talk to God about it. It's not about doing right, it's who you are. I keep telling y'all, it's who we are in him. That's what it's about. It's who we are in him. And I gave you a minute to get your Bible, so we're going to get into the word, because I'm only going to be in for about uh, 15 minutes tonight, okay? All right, and then I'll be on tomorrow. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws. And it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. This is a um, jam-packed little bunch of verses right here. It's talking about two kinds of people. Two, there are two kinds of people in the world. There is the person that has never been born again to receive the divine nature of God, to be changed, to... Um, have life changed, to have the life of God go through you and to make you alive unto him and unto spiritual things and unto having a relationship with him. See, when we're born into the world, we're born with a sinful nature and we are born, we are born dead in sin. 
and we are born dead unto having a relationship with God. Okay? Now, two types of people we're talking about here. Let's break the verse down. Then you have the other type of person. I'm sorry. The other type of person is someone that has been born again, someone that has been filled with the Holy Spirit, and God has changed their life, and um, they are in the way with God. They are growing their relationship with God, and they have a new mindset. It, it, is, a, it is a heart unto him of obedience, and it is a spirit connected with him. So, you know, you have heart, mind, and spirit, you know, that we're made of. And, you know, of course, this this flesh, this, you know, flesh here, you know what I mean? But there's two types of people in the world. And what we're going to read about is the difference between the two. So let's look at the verse and we're going to break it down. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. Now, we know that when we was in the world, that's all we thought about. That's all, well, you know, I got to get minds and, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You don't think about praying and asking God for direction. You're not um, um, having a heart towards him. You don't care really about the things of God. Okay, you might have some respect of God. You know, you went to church with your mama or your grandmama or whatever. But, you you know, you your heart is not dedicated unto God. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have God directing your life and giving you guidance and you, um, you don't care really for the things of God. You know what I'm saying? You care about the things of the world, um, getting success your way, all kinds of different things that we thought about before we got saved. Cause I was doing the same thing. I was 12 years old, you know, I didn't have no, um, adult thinking like that, trying to get success and stuff. But, you know, I thought about doing my own way. I didn't, you know, care about um, um, the things of God, you know what I mean, when I was 12. But God got a hold of me, and um, he made me born again, and he changed my heart. He changed my desires where I wanted to talk with him. I wanted to be around the people of God. I wanted to... um, um just have him to have my life and that grew as I got as I got older growing um as a young lady and growing um as a a child of God because I did have some time where uh like four years where you know I lost sight of him and I I didn't I wasn't present with him like I should have been you know what I mean and um I took my eyes off of him, and um, he was still there, though. He was still there. He was waiting for me to get totally focused back on him. I took my focus off of him, you know what I'm saying? But then um, later on in my uh, late teens, around 18, I put my focus back on him totally, and I have been going ever since, and um, I just keep looking towards him and growing in him. And that's what it is. Um, as a Christian, you're growing. It's a pro it's a growing process, maturation, maturing. Let's continue with the verse though. So it says, but those who are controlled by the Holy spirit, think about things that please the spirit. You know, when you're in Christ, you want to please God. When you're in Christ, you want to do what is right. You know what I mean? And your heart of hearts, your core, your core is clean. Your core is right. If I I keep saying it, if he saved you and you still have a sinful nature and you still want to do the wrong things and then what did he save you from? Maybe he really didn't save you. You know what I mean? Or you don't realize the fullness of what he has done and you're not living out of that fullness of what he has done. I'm living more so out of the fullness of what he has done in me. I realize um, that he has given me his divine nature. I, I'm a partaker of that. And he is in me. And he is and he is working in me. And oh my God. I mean, he'd... <sighs> when you really get a hold of the gospel. And you really get a hold 
of an understanding of your own salvation and you grow in that and you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, okay, I don't want to do these things that I used to do. And you're like, God, you're in me. I'm a child of God. That's what it is. You're, you realize that you're a child of God. And that changes everything. You don't want to be sinning. You don't want to. And if you do, you're like, God, I shouldn't have did that. That wasn't right. You know? So there's a stark difference between someone that is not saved and someone that is saved. Someone that's not saved don't have God in them. Someone that is truly saved has God in them and God is working in their life. Verse 6. So, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. And that's what the person that does not have Christ does. It says in Romans three uh, 6.23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the wages of sin is death. And as we as we had those of us that had that the sinful nature, that sin drive, I, I guess I should call it that that sin drive. That has been changed. We're not under that bondage anymore. Now, how we respond to um outside stimuli or the world, the flesh and the devil, when they come at us, we got to respond with the word of God. We got to let the divine nature respond. We can't um, respond with wrong thinking and then it moves into wrong action. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's like getting something new and learning how to use that. Okay. It's like, I thought of it on the way home. My people, um, were slaves here in this country, um, here in America. And, um, we were treated very cruelly and inhumane and we were treated as we were animals. And that was degrading and that, um, did a lot of damage to us mentally, physically, emotionally, all financially, all of that. Okay. So, but in 1865, um, the emancipation proclamation was written up by President Abraham Lincoln, and um, uh, he set the say the slaves free. Now there was some people, some black people, that didn't realize that they were free. They didn't they didn't hear about it or something. Maybe massa uh, a lot of the a lot of the masses was trying to hold on to uh, the slaves, but um, um, some of them didn't know that they were free and they were still slaving. They were still there at the, at the field and everything, not realizing that they were set free and they can do as they wanted to do, have a good life and, and, um, be on their own and, 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 um, live for themselves, you know? So it's the same thing, um, as what Christ did with us. When we got born again, those of us that are in Christ, we came out of the kingdom of darkness and came into Jesus' kingdom of marvelous light. Does that mean anything to you? You're not in and out of two kingdoms. You're in one kingdom. You're not in and out of Christ. You came out of Adam. Adam sinned and gave us the sinful nature. We were born with the sinful nature, but then we got born again of the spirit of God. And God says, you're in my kingdom now. You're in my realm now. And you're in me. In Romans 6, it talks about being baptized into Christ. That's not talking about physical water baptism. That's talking about being baptized in Christ. You're in Christ. Your location has changed. Baptizo in Greek means to dye something. Like you dye a piece of cloth from one color to another color. You dip that cloth in the dye. And it becomes total and totally submerged. Submerged, excuse me, in that dye. And it takes on the characteristics of whatever dye you're putting it in. That's what that means to be in Christ. You're in him. That's it. Let's keep reading. <laughs> I don't know how I can hit it home to you. You know what I mean? 
you know, because when God made me to realize that, you know, reading the word and just um, listening to different um, sermons and books and things and like, wow, OK, that's what that verse means. OK, really? OK, wow. You know, it changed my perspective out of um, um, something that I was believing was true and then it wasn't. And the truth has set me free. You know what I mean? I have so much more peace now. I enjoy my salvation. I really do. <laughs> okay, so let's continue to read. I'm sorry I have the Bible here. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Let us continue to read. Where am I? Verse 7. Okay. For the sinful nature is always hostile towards God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. A person that is not saved cannot obey God in any way because God is not in them to give them the power to be obedient. But once you are born again, God in, in, in fills you with himself that he gives you the power to do as he says for you to do. Now, sometimes we don't do it all the time. You know what I mean? Um, we are still human beings, but... We have the great God of heaven inside of us and he has made a change and he's continuing to grow us and he's continuing to change us in his likeness and in his character. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. That's somebody that does not have Christ. You're not th really thinking about God. You know, God is not in your life. You know, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about belonging to a certain denomination. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, where Jesus comes into your life and changes it. He comes into your heart. He connects with your spirit. You have union with Christ, union with the Father and union with the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a life changing thing. Jesus is eternal life. So therefore, if you don't accept Jesus, you don't receive eternal life. It's like two and two, two plus two equals four. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. And um, we have come out of that sinful, um, dark realm. Jesus rescued us, us from that. That's what the word salvation means, rescue. You know, let's keep reading. It says, that's why those who are still under the control of this, of their sinful nature can never please God. You could try to be good. You could be moral all you want to. But if your nature has not been changed and you don't have a relationship, it's two, it's two things. If, your na if, if you have not received Christ and your nature has not been changed, and number two, if you have not... Have, if you don't have a union with God and relationship with God, then you're not saved. If his Holy Spirit is not in you and you're not born again, then you don't have eternal life. You don't have life. You may have physical life, you know, and God gave that to you, you know, as the creator of the universe. But you don't have spiritual life. You're still dead in your sins. You can't respond to God. You know what I mean? And people... People say, oh, well, you know, if God is so good, why is he sending people to help? God doesn't send anybody to hell. We choose that when we don't choose him. I'll say it again. God does not send anybody to hell. We choose that when we do not choose him. You know, there are consequences. And not even so much consequences. It is a Jesus eternal life. It says it in John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they would know you, the true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou has sent. That's the relationship that we're talking about here. And Jesus is eternal life. And if you don't have Christ, then you don't have eternal life. So eternal life. So therefore, the result is eternal damnation, which is hell. Hell is not so much about the fire. Hell is about separation from your creator, from the redeemer that wanted to redeem you which you rejected, you know, come to Christ today. Christ is all you need and he will give you all you need, you know. 
I want to bless you guys today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope this was a little bit of word, a little bit of clarity for those that are in Christ to know, wow, okay. Hmm. I just need to grow in him. I just need to um, allow his spirit to um, make the changes in my life that I need. God bless you guys. I wish you a wonderful weekend. I don't know. I've just been tired this week. I don't know if you can tell, but um, God is good. God is good. And um, he is to be praised and exalted and uplifted. And he's our father. If you're in Christ, what a wonderful thing that Jesus died for all of us. You have to just receive it if you have not received it. But if you have, what a wonderful thing. We don't have to go to hell. We could be with the God who made us and created us. And I always tell you that you want to know yourself and you want to know purpose. You know, I'm always talking about two things. Relationship with God, salvation, and destiny. And those things, those two things go hand in hand. If you want to know your purpose, if you want to know your, what your destiny is, or you want to have your destiny and you know what it is, it was surrender to Christ. Because that's where you're going to find it. That's what God is going to show you and say, this is what I have for you to do. And I'm going to empower you to do it. You know, if God has spoken to you something and it seems bigger than you, then that's God speaking because he will tell you something that's bigger than you so that you could depend upon him so that he could do it through you. And it won't be you. And your power, it will be Christ in you and you'll be cooperating with him, doing it together with him. You know, God is not some spooky ghost, you know, like, um, um, <laughs> like I was a little tired on the way home and I was like, God, you know, drive for me. And I said, no, help me to drive. You know, God is not going to just take over the wheel and drive for me, but he's going to empower me, help me to wake up a little bit to be able to finish the drive. And he did. I got home safely and I praise God for that. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I am going to get some rest. I love you. Take care. God bless.